Are you an optimist or a pessimist? Our first guest is a nationally recognized career and reinvention coach who we have enjoyed featuring on the show this year. Dan Mason is going to reveal three steps to protect your optimism, even if those around you are pessimistic. Hi, Dan. Good morning, guys. Great to be with you. Great to be with you as well. And, you know, we are in a particular time where things aren't always feeling as positive. And so you have a concept of this optimism versus toxic positivity. And so we want to learn a lot more yes. about that because I think that's something we can all take away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, optimism is kind of getting a bad rap over the course of the pandemic. There's a lot of people who think that maybe it's just Pollyanna thinking, that it's putting our head in the sand, and it really lacks context on what optimism is, right? To be optimistic is not to deny that there are challenges in life, in business, in our relationships, but it's getting radically honest about what those are without catastrophizing it and making it worse than it is, and also cultivating an ability to see things better than what they are. And I'd add in one other point, it's really believing in your ability to make it so. Now, toxic positivity, on the other hand, is sort of the product of 10 years of Instagram culture, where everybody cut and paste like an inspiring Oprah quote and thinks that they're an influencer. Mm. And a lot of times we'll say, we'll pay lip service to positive thoughts, but really what it's concealing is an energy of repression, denial, avoidance. It's the things that happen when, you know, somebody lost a job over the course of the pandemic and their friends go, well, you know, getting angry isn't going to do anything for you. You know, anger, grief, sadness, those are all perfectly legitimate emotions. And when we're repressing them during times of trouble, that can eventually lead to depression and mental health challenges. So uh, genuine optimism, really about radical honesty. Toxic positivity is more about repression and denial. Hmm. Those are some interesting yeah, radical terms. Honesty. And yeah, Whoa. yeah. You know, I think a lot of times when you, when you think about optimism, what I'm curious about is, is there such thing, I've made a comment one time that happy people scare me. Mm. And what I mean by that is sometimes people are forcing that happiness Right? Like, hey, great day. It's going to be fantastic. Everything's great. I'm curious where this fits in because I think there, life doesn't work that way. It's kind of my opinion. I, Dan, what do you think? Uh, how does that compare to this kind of conversation about optimism where people are just kind of overdoing it a little bit, I think? Yeah, happiness and optimism is something that you cultivate within yourself, Corey. It's not something that you can force upon other people. And a lot of times when we're in this place of toxic positivity, what it's really about is trying to diminish the emotions of other people, not letting them have their unique reaction or their experience. So for instance, when we talk about, you know, how do you relate to somebody who's going through a difficult time? Maybe somebody lost a loved one. The toxic positivity thing would just be, oh, well, you know, they're in a better place now. Mm. A place of optimism would say, hey, I can tell you really miss them. Hey, I can tell that you're in pain. You know, so it's really that difference in the approach. And it's recognizing that sometimes the kindest, most empathetic and loving thing that we can do in our relationships is to let somebody experience a situation the way that they're doing it without making them wrong, without shaming them or trying to change them. Yeah, and that's really interesting because, as you mentioned, having the emotions, that's not a bad thing. Right. We've got to have those emotions. We have to deal with them. And you have some tips for how we kind of change our emotional state as we're dealing with these different emotions that we have. So tell us about that. Yeah, you know, every, I think it was Joseph Campbell that said, every feeling felt is bliss. Some of the biggest changes that I've made personally in my life have actually been driven from getting really angry about the situation that I was in. So, you know, there's one word in particular that we could talk about today that can really help you get through any challenge that you're facing in life, and that is context. What am I making this mean? In my life in 2012, I was really overweight. I was getting divorced. I was battling depression. And I was stuck in this corporate job where I was getting paid really well, but I was totally unfulfilled. Nothing in my life was working in that point. And what I had to do was go within and say, is this the end or is this the beginning? 
And sort of, you know, finding that right context that empowered me was realizing that maybe some of these things that are falling away in my life don't have value for me anymore, and that there's actually something better out there for me. And from that context, I was able to shift my emotional state, radically reinvent my life in literally 90 days. So context does become a huge component of uh, managing any difficult situation that you're going through in life or in business. Trust in the process. Wow, I like that. Yeah. I, I like being a product of your, taking your own medicine, right? You're a product of having taken your own medicine and done the work and gone through the steps. Yeah, like yeah. That's pretty awesome. Now we've got to talk about 10Xing because we've seen it, we've heard it. Tell us what does it mean and how do we 10X our positivity? Yeah, if you want to lift your optimism, it's really about creating an inner and outer environment that's going to perpetuate that. You're not going to grow a beautiful garden in bad soil. So we want to look at what's your inner environment. In fact, what are you feeding your mind? Are you the person who's doom scrolling on Facebook and reading the perpetual outrage that your friends are sharing? Or are you listening to inspiring podcasts like mine, for instance? Or if you're watching this show and having fun with the power team, right? You want to be feeding your uh, mind information that's going to lift you up rather than bring you down. We also want to look at your external environment and ask myself, who are the five people I'm spending the most time with? Because who you hang out with is who you become. Are you hanging out with the people who are perpetually outraged, angry, sad? You know, and sometimes it's difficult because that can be our spouse, it can be our parents, it can be our friends. So we're not necessarily cutting those people out of your life. That's not a loving approach. But you want to genuinely seek out community with people who value what you value, who are working toward the things that you're working toward. One of the things I've done in my coaching practice over the past year and a half is create more group programs, which have been awesome containers for people to surround themselves with other optimistic people who lift them up rather than pull them down. Wow. All the nuggets. Yeah, I, I just it. have so many <laughs> things that, oh my goodness. I mean, just thinking about who you spend your time with and, you know, what you allow is so important in the process of how you feel on a, on a moment by moment basis. Thank you so much, Dan, for being with us. Always good to be with the power team. You guys have a great day. I love it. That's going to stick. Yes. <laughs> for more information on Dan Mason and his services, please log on to our show website by 3 p.m. today at WTVR.com slash VTM.